Thank you. So this morning, I want to talk about your supernatural God. Have you heard that word before? I'm going to explain it. Supernatural. Supernatural God. It means... Supernatural means it's above. It's higher than. So this is normal. It's above normal. It's better than normal. So, so like God is not normal. He's above normal. That means he's supernatural. So sometimes something happens to you and you think, wow, that's really weird. Something really cool happens in your life and you think, wow, that is so weird. But no, it's from God. It's definitely from God. Because God is supernatural. And he's very loving and kind. And he wants to give you things. And he wants to help you. He wants to meet your needs. He wants you to have dreams. And to find your dreams. And he's always giving you things. And God wants you to have your heart's desires. He wants you to have the desires of your heart. So know that God loves you. He is kind and giving and forgiving. And God is our father and our mother. And he wants to provide for you. And, and most importantly, he wants you to have the desires of your heart. Most of you know the story of Abraham and Sarah. Remember that story? Who remembers about what kids? Do any kids remember? So Sarah really wanted a baby so badly, and they struggled, and she couldn't get pregnant. Both Abraham and Sarah were old, so very old. And then in Genesis chapter 18, God tells Abraham and Sarah, you will get pregnant, and you will have a baby. And Sarah laughed. Because she said, that's not possible. We're too old. I can't possibly get pregnant. It's, it's impossible. And she laughed. And so God asked her, why are you laughing? I told you that you will become pregnant and you will have a baby. But you're laughing. But Sarah lied. She lied to God. And she said, I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't laugh. And God said, yes, you did. Because we know that our God knows everything. What we think, what we say, what we dream, what's in our hearts, God knows it all. So God said, yes, you did. But the cool part of that story is that in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14a, God said, I told you that you would get pregnant and you laughed at me. But God said to Sarah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Can you imagine? Look at that verse. God said, is there anything that's too hard for me? Because Sarah so badly wanted a baby. But she was so old. And Abraham was old. I think they were in their 90s, but I didn't check. But I think 90s. But they were old. Impossible in the normal world, or the natural world. But it's not impossible with God because God is not normal. He is supernatural. So God said, Sarah, is there anything too hard for me? Anything? So now I know I have no doubt, no doubt in my mind that each of you have a dream and a desire in your heart. And I know that you really want something that's really big and you've dreamt about it. Maybe for a short time or for maybe many, many years. But you didn't do anything because you thought it was impossible. You thought, oh, I can't do that. I can't have that. We can't have that kind of marriage. We can't have that kind of, you know, anything. And you haven't moved forward because in your heart, you just think it's silly. It's not possible. 
But I want to tell you, I think you're wrong. If you think like that, then I think you're wrong. I think your heart's desires, if they are pleasing to God, God wants you to have it. And what I mean by pleasing to God, I mean, so the desire of your heart is not selfish. The desire of your heart is not self-serving. The desire of your heart is not illegal. The desire of your heart is not going to hurt yourself and it's not going to hurt other people. And you have a relationship with God. So the desire of your heart, yes, God wants you to have that. Yes, absolutely. It doesn't matter how big you feel it is. God wants you to have it. Part of God's plan and part of what pleases Him is to meet the needs. God wants to give you things. And I think God tells you that nothing is too hard for me. If you think your dream is too big for God, or you think that your relationship with your husband or your wife, it's just run dry, it's just going to stay the same, it's not going to grow, or you think you have to live with your illnesses or your injuries and just accept it, and just think, oh, I can't have my dreams met because I'm too sick or I'm in too much pain, or I just can't, I can't do it because my life is not normal, I just can't move forward. And you think you must accept the answer, no. So I want to talk to you about the desires of your heart, and I want you to believe you have to want. You have to believe that God is not normal or natural, He is supernatural. And your attitude has to change. Like thinking that my dream is impossible, you need to change your attitude and think my dream and the desire of my heart is very possible with God. Right? Yes or no? So I think you're wrong. If the desire of your heart continues with the relationship with God, I think it can be very successful. Let me explain this. So some people have a desire or a dream, but they feel like God has a limit. Like they pray and then they think, oh, God didn't answer me, so I guess I have a limit with God, so he's not gonna answer me. Obviously, I'm not gonna get that dream. It's obviously it's not working. My problems are still popping up. Things keep happening. And God's just telling me no. God doesn't have time. He has a time limit. But we can't give God a time limit. We assume that he said no. But you have to remember that our time and his time are not the same. The desire of our hearts and our beliefs that are pleasing to God. We can't be selfish. It can't be illegal. It can't be self-serving. But the desires of our heart, if they're good desires like to have a good marriage, or to want us to go to a certain school, or to have a job, or a specific career, or a family. Whatever your heart desire is, and if it doesn't conflict with God, He wants you to have it. But you have to change your thinking. Like people that say, I have a desire on my heart, but it's just crazy. I'm never going to get that. It's crazy. I can't ask that. It's silly. Not at my age, or my education, or my skill level. I just can't. So people stop praying and asking God to help them for the desires of their heart. But we need to ask with confidence and know that it's important. And if it's important, it has worth to God and that He does pay attention. He is attentive to us. And He wants to give and give and give. Like Nicole, like her sermon. That really matched my sermon this morning. So to have a heart's desire to give. 
God wants to give to us, but guess what? I think, let me back up, guess what? God loves you, of course, somebody said. Guess what? I think that the desires of your heart, that God puts those there. Uh, that's my opinion. That's my theology. I think that when you get motivated, I don't think that I would have adopted all these children if God hadn't put that in my heart. I don't think I would have become a pastor if God did not put the desire in my heart. I don't think I would live in Kansas if God did not put that desire in my heart. I feel like he puts things in each person that will help develop your skills and your talents. Like if it's music, like singing, playing the piano, the desires of your heart, to desire to make things, the desire to be a photographer, all these different desires of things that we desire to do, God puts that in your heart, in you and me. And why? Because, because God wants you to be successful. He wants you to enjoy your life. He wants you to witness his love through his gift to you. So your heart's desire is from God. And you know what's from God and what isn't from God. You know. Anything that hurts yourself or hurts other people or is illegal or makes you disconnect from God, it's not from Him. Anything that makes you happy and enjoy your life and brings you closer to God and is pleasing for you and pleasing for other people, that is from God. It glorifies Him and it makes Him happy and it makes you happy. So if you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. My, one of the best things I enjoy in life is my children. I love giving them things. I love buying and giving them things. I love giving things up, like give up Starbucks or things like that, shopping so I, or saving money so I can buy things for them. I just really enjoy it, I love it. Like at four in the morning, I'll be flipping through books, looking for things, trying to, like helping them take their, take a trailer to take things to college or helping them pack or whatever they do. I love doing that. And I really love and enjoy it. It makes me very happy to do things for my children, right? You guys know, right? Everybody's like, yes, yes, yes. I love it. Like when my children ask, I want to do it. So we must think about God. Think about God over and over. Think about who He is. He is our Father, our Mother. We are created in His image. So if we love to see our children, love to see our children laugh, our grandchildren smile. Oh, it just melts my heart. I just want to kiss them. I don't want to let go. If our heart's like that with our children and our grandchildren, can you imagine how God is with us? He wants to see happiness in our lives. Christian life does not mean it has to be dull or boring. Christian life does not mean I must give up my heart's desires and my dreams. And I think, oh, I can't do that because I'm a Christian now. I have to give all these things up. That's not true. What it means is God put these things into your heart. He gave you a gift. And he wants you to be happy while you're building a relationship with him. So people who follow their dreams and they let go of God, you're going to see them be frustrated. It's very frustrating. You will see that for sure. 
You must take what God gives you and enjoy it and continue a relationship with Him and continue to build that relationship. And to chase your dreams with God in a relationship. And you can overcome so many things if you enjoy the relationship that you have with God. But you have to have that. But we make mistakes because we find that our heart's desire is like with something that's bad and we think, oh God gave me that. That's me. And then instead of telling God, thank you, we chase something that's not from Him. And then we tell God, oh, I'm sorry, I'm too tired, I don't have time for you, I wish I could, I wish I could pray, I wish I could get to know you better. I really do, but i got to focus on this. And we start chasing this dream or this desire of our heart, and everything just goes downhill and we crash. People tell me that they feel bad, and I tell them, you got to look up. You gotta believe. God wants us to be happy. And yes, God wants your marriage to be beautiful. And God wants your health. He wants you to overcome things in your health. He wants you to chase your dreams. He wants you to enjoy he wants to he enjoys seeing you happy. Same as we enjoy seeing our children happy. It's the same thing. But it's more so with God. He's our father and our mother. He does not punish us and judge us and get mad at us and block us. It's not about that. God loves us and he loves to give. And he's kind and he's merciful and compassionate, and loving, forgiving. All of those things in one. So whatever your dream is, Whatever your desire is, ask Him. Ask. Go ahead and chase it. God's waiting for you to ask so He can give you help and help you get what you're dreaming about. And I believe that you have to do your part. Again, I want to emphasize this. Your life can't progress under supernatural, excuse me, it has to be supernatural. The supernatural part, you can't do it without God. 1,000%, not 100, 1,000%, you must continue a relationship with Him. That is the key. It's not, you can't say, I don't have time. Because then you won't find your dreams and you won't find your goals. You have to keep the relationship with God your number one priority. And then chase your dreams and enjoy your life and have fun in your life. With your spouse, have fun with your, in your career, in your downtime, whatever. You can have fun with your children. Have fun. Enjoy this life under Him, but connect with Him and a relationship with Him. I think you have to believe, first of all, you have to believe. It's easy for me to say believe, but it's hard to really believe. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can tell myself sometimes, I've, I've, I get myself down and it's hard to come out of it, and I think, wait, I believe that he can whatever it happens to be. And then I can, I try to pursue my goals, but when I try to do it by myself, I can feel it like a disconnect if I do it on my own. I can feel it. And it's hard to really meditate and have it ingrained in you, in your heart and your mind, to think that I believe God can put this dream in my heart. I believe he put that there. This is a good dream or a good goal, and it makes me happy and healthy. It helps my family. But I believe God puts that there, so if he put it there, then I have permission to pursue it. He's backing me up. He's guiding me both at the same time. 
So I, secondly, I believe God wants God wants us to be happy. I do believe that. We have to believe it. So tell the person sitting on your left, God wants you to be happy.
He put all of these things in each one of us. You deserve to be happy and to enjoy your life and to enjoy your family and enjoy your career and enjoy your skill and your talent, your hobby. You deserve it. One thousand percent. Just believe it. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. You are a wonderful father, wonderful mother. You take care of us and love us, nurture us, provide for us. You want to see us happy. But sometimes our lives in the world just hangs on to us and we can't let it go and follow you. But we need to follow you 1,000%. So I pray this morning that all of us here will let go of the world more and more. And we would feel free, like the song that we sang this morning talked about your children being free. We want to be free. Lord, help us to know how to let go and connect with you 1,000%. That's my belief. And I think I deserve to be happy. I deserve to follow my dreams. I deserve to follow my heart's desires. And I will follow you because I believe that you want me happy. And I want them to think about that and help them get through Help your spirit to touch each one of them. Help them to get through and really believe it 1,000%. In your name, in your son's name, 